an imperfect conflagration from the parenticide club by ambrose bierce this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by dale grothman an imperfect conflagration by ambrose bierce early one june morning in 1872 i murdered my father an act which made a deep impression on me at the time this was before my marriage while i was living with my parents in wisconsin my father and i were in the library of our home dividing the proceeds of a burglary which we had committed that night these consisted of household goods mostly and the task of equitable distribution was difficult we got on very well with the napkins towels and such things and the silverware was parted pretty much nearly equally but you can see for yourself that when you try to divide a single music box by two without a remainder you will have trouble it was that music box which brought disaster and disgrace upon our family if we had left it my poor father might now be alive it was an exquisite and beautiful piece of workmanship inlaid with costly woods and carven very curiously it would not only play a great variety of tunes it would whistle like a quail bark like a dog crow every morning at daylight whether it was wound up or not and break the ten commandments it was this last mentioned accomplishment that won my father's heart and caused him to commit the only dishonorable act of his life though possibly he would have committed more if he had been spared he tried to conceal that music box from me and declared upon his honor that he had not taken it though i know very well that so far as he was concerned the burglary had been undertaken chiefly for the purpose of obtaining it my father had the music box hidden under his cloak we had worn cloaks by way of disguise he had solemnly assured me that he did not take it i knew that he did and knew something of which he was evidently ignorant namely that the box would crow at daylight and betray him if i could prolong the division of profits till that time all occurred as i wished as the gaslight began to pale in the library and the shape of the windows was seen dimly behind the curtains a long cock a doodle doo came from beneath the old man's cloak followed by a few bars of an aria from tannhauser ending with a loud click a small hand axe which we had used to break into the unlucky house lay between us on the table i picked it up the old man seeing that further concealment was useless took the box from under his cloak and set it on the table cut it in two if you prefer that plan he said i tried to save it from destruction he was a passionate lover of music and could himself play a concertina with expression and feeling i said i do not question the purity of your motives that would be presumptuous of me to sit in judgment on my father but business is business and with this axe i am going to effect a dissolution of our partnership unless you will consent in all future burglaries to wear a bell punch no he said after some reflection no i could not do that it would look like a confession of dishonesty people would say that you distrusted me i could not help but admire his spirit and sensitiveness for a moment i was proud of him and disposed to overlook his fault but a glance at the richly jeweled music box decided me and as i said i removed the old man from this veil of tears having done so i was a trifle uneasy not only was he my father the author of my being but the body would be certainly discovered it was now broad daylight and my mother was likely to enter the library at any moment under the circumstances i thought it expedient to remove her also which i did then i paid off all the servants and discharged them that afternoon i went to the chief of police and told him what i had done and asked his advice it would be very painful for me if the facts became publicly known my conduct would be generally condemned the newspapers would bring it up against me if i should ever run for office the chief saw the force of these considerations he was himself an assassin of wide experience after consulting with the presiding judge of the court of variable jurisdiction he advised me to conceal the bodies in one of the bookcases get a heavy insurance on the house 
and burn it down. This I proceeded to do. In the library was a bookcase which my father had recently purchased from some cranky inventor and had not filled. It was in shape and size something like the old-fashioned wardrobes, which one sees in bedrooms without closets, but it opened all the way down, like a woman's nightdress. It had glass doors. I had recently laid out my parents, and they were now rigid enough to stand erect, so I stood them in this bookcase, from which I had removed the shelves. I locked them in, and tacked some curtains over the glass doors. The inspector from the insurance office passed a half-dozen times before the case without suspicion. That night, after getting my policy, I set fire to the house and started through the woods to town, two miles away, where I managed to be found about the time the excitement was at its height. With cries of apprehension for the fate of my parents, I joined the rush and arrived at the fire some two hours after I had kindled it. The whole town was there as I dashed up. The house was entirely consumed, but in one end of the level bed of growing embers, bold, upright, and uninjured, was the bookcase. The curtains had been burned away, exposing the glass doors through which a fierce red light illuminated the interior. There stood my dear father, in his habit as he lived, and at his side the partner of his joys and sorrows. Not a hair on them was singed, their clothing was intact. On their heads and throats the injuries which in the accomplishment of my designs I had been compelled to inflict were conspicuous. As in the presence of a miracle, the people were silent. Awe and terror had stilled every tongue. I was myself greatly affected. Some three years later, when the events herein related had nearly faded from my memory, I went to New York to assist in passing some counterfeit U.S. bonds. Carelessly looking into a furniture store one day, I saw the exact counterpart of the bookcase. I bought it for a trifle from a reformed inventor, the dealer explained. He said it was fireproof, the pores of the wood being filled with alum under hydraulic pressure and the glass made of asbestos. I don't suppose it's really fireproof. You can have it for the price of an ordinary bookcase. No, I said, if you cannot warrant it fireproof, I won't take it, and I bade him good morning. I would not have had it at any price. It revived memories that were exceedingly disagreeable. The End of the Imperfect Conflagration by Ambrose Bierce